Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Rachel and I am knitting. Not right now, but most of the time. And it's time for me to tell you all about the knitting that I've done in the past week. Today's video is episode seven of the Rachel is Knitting podcast. So today's episode, I'm going to walk you through all the knitting that I did from the afternoon of Monday, March 18th, to today, March 25th. So there is a little bit of overlapping in the timeline that my podcasts cover, assuming that I film them like, you know, on schedule, even though schedules are fake and not like they don't anyway, they don't matter, especially for this podcast. But okay, I'm trying to let go of the the schedule dog dogmatism. Okay, but Assuming that I film every week, there is still some overlap where uh, I typically film on Mondays and, you know, I knit. If I knit Monday morning, I will mention it in the podcast. And if I knit Monday afternoon and evening, you'll hear about it in the next week's podcast. Okay, anyway, none of that really matters. It's all semantics. But the point is, I have a week's worth of knitting to tell you about. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the first section of our show, which is project updates. And I have uh, a solid list to get through with you. So let's just go down the line. I'm going to start by showing you my progress on the Azucena. I am about to start the third color work motif on the Azucena. When you cast on, you cast on with the contrast color, and then you see you bring in the main color with this really beautiful scalloped detail. And then you have some flower motifs that progressively get bigger as you go uh, down the pattern. So I have finished the two motifs that have the smaller sized flowers, and I am now about to move on to the medium sized flowers. I'm not sure. Oh, I tried. To, I that was really like too risky to do, and I I really shouldn't have risked it. You can see that I did have some stitches slide off my needles, but I can just slip them right back on, no problem. Um, that's always a little scary when it is mohair, because that's so such a nightmare to have mistakes in, but everything except I missed one strand of mohair when I was picking up. Let me just fix that, fix my mistake right then. Anyway, I was trying to tell you that I finished the two small flower motifs and now I'm moving to the next size up. I'm not sure if uh, there are three different sizes or four different sizes of flower motif, um, but either way, I'm moving on to the next size. My progress has not been as quick as I would have liked, but my dry hands continue to plague me. And I did get something this week that has been helping with them that I'll show you uh, shortly. But there's the progress on my Azucena. So the knit along is still going strong. If you wanna join the knit along, you certainly still can. Make sure you use code Rachel Azucena to get the pattern for 50% off. I don't get anything from that if you know that's important to you to know uh, it's just a benefit to you so if you want the pattern for 50% off please by all means use that code the Azucena has been a real joy to knit so far I haven't had any roadblocks any issues any obstacles with the knitting process or with the pattern as written um, not to say those won't happen but they haven't happened yet so I've been very happy with that um, it's been a breath of fresh air, to be honest with you, because you may remember my Corin cardigan. I had some considerable roadblocks with that um, that I go over in my FO Diary video. And my Lume sweater, which I recently finished, and I haven't made my FO Diary video like quite yet, uh, there were some issues with the pattern writing there as well, with some instructions and with some math. The math wasn't mathing, but so far on the Azucena, everything is lining up. So that's making the knitting process much more enjoyable. And I really appreciate that. So there's my update on the Azucena. Next, I will update you on my baby blanket. So I told you uh, in last week's podcast that I wanted this baby blanket to be done for my cousin's baby shower on Sunday. Guess what wasn't done for my cousin's baby shower on Sunday? This baby blanket. But look, I did make a lot of really good progress. I'd say I'm maybe halfway done. 
Oh gosh, that's horrible to think about. I may be halfway done. I really, really want to finish it uh, this week, uh, even though it wasn't done in time for the baby shower. So I have started on the second skein. Um, this is a 185 gram skein. So all told, this is like a little over three and a half skeins um, total. Like if you were thinking of skeins as 100 gram skeins, two skeins of the loops and thread. Oh yeah, I should tell you also, this is loops and thread flex. Some of you were curious because I don't think I told you what it was called in last week's podcast, but it's loops and threads flex tongue twister and this color is just called light pink so nothing too complicated there it's an acrylic yarn um 79 acrylic 21 percent polyester and yeah it is what it is so I'm hoping to finish that this week that's the update on the baby blanket the next thing that i want to update you on the next project that I work on, worked on, if I can find a place to set this baby blanket down. I need to find a solution to when I, fin when I film the podcast to have a place to set all my treasures because I kind of run out of surface area, like lickety split when I'm filming these. Okay, so we've gone over the Azucena, we've gone over the baby blanket. The next thing that I want to show you is actually a finished object. Where is it? Again, the problem of Limited surface area strikes again. Um, this is a finished object. It is not steam blocked yet. It needs to be desperately. But this is a Knit E-Reader Cozy. This is a new design that's currently in test. I was a test knitter for this, so prestigious. Um, and it's designed by Leslie of Knit California. It is, just like the name says, a Knit E-Reader Cozy. So I'm just putting my Kindle in here and I'm gonna hold it upside down just holding the tips of the cozy I'm not holding the Kindle at all itself and it is snug in there in the pattern there's an option to have a few different closures like by putting snap buttons in here or a zipper or having an i-cord bind off with elastic um, but I want the option that has added snap buttons but as you may be able to see there are no snap buttons, so I don't know if I'm going to add those or not, or if I'll just be lazy and leave it like this, but uh, I finished this yesterday. I cast it on yesterday, and I finished it yesterday, and I used the same yarn that I used for Jane's hat, so one strand of A Beautiful Woman Who Cannot Dance, It Seems a Crime Against Nature, that's this one, and it's from Through the Wardrobe Yarn Co., and then also one strand of Gen Z Purple, that's this one, and that's from Kimber's Cozy Creations. So together, they make this stunning, stunning fabric. It's so pretty. It's like the most beautiful light lavender with flecks of cream and pink, and it's just beautiful. So therefore, this Kindle Cozy, or excuse me, this e-reader Cozy that I'm using for my Kindle, matches perfectly to Jane's hat, which I will present to her when we go back to Ireland. So that means, guess what that means? It means I need to get in the habit of using this dang thing, but as you may be able to ascertain, I'm not currently in the habit of doing that. So uh, obviously I'm only going to bring this with me to Ireland if I'm in the habit of using it and I'm just like a little bookworm, can't leave it at home. Um, so therefore, honestly, what will happen is I probably won't get in the habit of using my Kindle, but I want to show Jane so badly that I'll just bring it anyway. And here it is in all its glory. Beautiful. Um, so there's another project that I worked on this week. Uh, I, feel, I feel like I'm kind of blazing through these projects. I don't know. Every week I feel insecure about a new thing. Am I talking too fast? Am I giving enough details? Um, what 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 else what else do you need to know? This is a sock for your Kindle. Um, Leslie designed this. It's in testing, like I said. Um, 
it's it's such a quick knit I made it in five hours total from start to finish and during that time period DJ and I went to go get lunch so probably like a four hour project all told super quick knit this would be a great gift knit also for the reader in your life so if you don't already follow Leslie of Knit California be sure to do that so you can watch for the pattern release of the knit e-reader cozy uh, I think she's aiming for an April 13th launch, launch date, so keep an eye out for that. Okay, there, I added lots of information, and I hope that it was helpful uh, for that. So, let's let's go back to my notes here. I updated you on the Azucena, the baby blanket, the knit e-reader cozy. Oh, I have another finished object to update you on, and I don't have it with me. I wonder if I remember to get a video. I don't think I remember to get a video of it, but I finally finished my purse project. Finished my purse project for my grandma. So that was really exciting. Uh, cast it off, blocked it, and then I presented it to my grandma over dinner at a restaurant this last week, and she absolutely loved it. Um, when my mom said, do you know what the colorway name is? She said, no, fuchsia? And my mom said, no, it's purple underpants. And my grandma said, no, it can't be. So she was scandalized by the colorway name um, and she insists that it is called fuchsia. So if you see my grandmother wearing her scarf, be sure to compliment the beautiful yarn in the fuchsia colorway. But in reality, it is purple underpants from cesium yarn from the cabin collection. So named after the purple inner petals of my beloved fuchsia flower that lives uh, on the cabin property. So, got that off the needles. I don't even know when I cast it on. It, sometime in late 2023, certainly when we got back from Ireland. I think maybe in November or December. I think December. I think, yeah, I think December. Late December, like around Christmas time is when I cast it on. But to be honest with you, I don't know off the top of my head. But I did cast it off this last week, blocked it, gave it to my grandma, was very happy to get a whip off the needles and to give her something because she is absolutely knit worthy. Now, okay, okay, so I guess I'll take this opportunity to go on a bit of a rabbit trail because I guess that's what podcasts are for. Uh, surely so many of us have many knit worthy or sew worthy or crochet worthy or, or just make worthy people in our lives, but we forget to make stuff for them. And this isn't to say that we should feel obligated to do that, but it sure does feel good when you actually get around to it and you're able to give that gift. Like it wasn't for Christmas. It wasn't for her birthday. It was just because, and it felt really good. I'm really glad that she has that. So really happy to update you on my purse project. Okay, the next project that I want to update you on is my Oregon cardigan. So I'm going to give you a quick background on my Oregon cardigan. If you're not familiar with this absolute, you know, mountaintop of a knit pattern, the Oregon cardigan is a pattern by Alice Starmore. And aside from finding the pattern somewhere on eBay or in an old publication, uh, you can only get this pattern by purchasing a kit to make the pattern directly from Virtual Yarns, which is Alice Starmore's yarn slash design company, as I understand it. So the Oregon cardigan, and I'll put a picture up here, is just this absolutely beautiful Fair Isle color work cardigan. It's steaked down the center and at the armholes, so it's entirely knit in the round. And um, I have attempted this sweater a few different times. The first time I swatched and my gauge was off. This was like in the summer of 2022. I swatched and my gauge was way off. So I did some knitting math and I cast on a size that I thought would be in alignment with the knitting math I did. It was far too big. So I frogged that, I believe, and I, you know, lived to fight another day. Then in January of 2023, I swatched again, and then I was going to go off that swatch to make uh, my attempt number two. So here is my attempt number two, and uh, it's too big. It's just far too large. So when I cast this on, I 
I found this to be a devastating blow because I felt like I don't like my body's changing I don't know my body I like I don't know simple math I don't know anything which was like normally just you know a regular Tuesday but at this time I was also juggling all of this self-doubt associated with my dissertation so I was like this was like way too much this was like the straw that broke the camel's back so I decided you know a project of this caliber is not what is not nice to myself to be working on at that time in my life so I put this all on waste yarn I didn't bind it off and I wet blocked it so I made this function as my swatch and you can kind of see um it's just gorgeous so when you buy the pattern card kit that's what they call it pattern card kits they send you the pattern in like a matte glossy paper that's contradictory it's like a night I mean like a nice cardstock like trifold pattern brochure kind of uh, so that's the pattern card and then they send you all the yarn that you need for your size so this is super colorful every row is color work on this pattern but no row uses more than two colors so it it looks very intricate and certainly it is but each row maxes out at two colors so you don't have to worry about three color color work four color color work etc is there more than four color color work that sounds absolutely heinous a crime against nature um so Anyway, that's the that's the preamble about the Oregon cardigan. But since I'm in Oregon now, I thought it is incumbent on me to cast this on again. So on Thursday, I cast it on again. And I used that uh, failed attempt as my gauge swatch to determine my gauge. Honestly, I should swatch again to know what my gauge is now in this day and age. But I'm not going to do that. I'm not gonna do it and you know what maybe in some future podcast episode I will look back and I will say wow was I making a bad decision when I decided not to swatch we're just gonna have to find out together uh, but I did cast on and I'll tell you I might take this off I don't know like it's like 300 and something stitches so I know either way I need to count again and make sure that I cast them on correctly um, sorry, my memory card filled up, so, uh, if, like, the shot is a little jostled and it's not exactly aligned, that's why. Because I had to do some investigating to figure out what in the world just happened. Okay, anyway, so, uh, what was I saying? Basically, I need to join this in the round. Uh, but I cast it on in Oregon. So even if I <laughs> don't do a single other thing in Oregon, if I keep this cast on, then I cast on my Oregon cardigan in Oregon. So you see the poetry there. You see the symbolism there. So uh, maybe I need to just, you know, get over it and join this in the round and get going. We'll see. Uh, but either way, I cast my Oregon cardigan on while in Oregon. So there's an unexpected update for you on the Oregon cardigan. And then the next project that I have to update you on, or that I want to update you on, I should say, that I worked on this past week, um, I actually cast it on yesterday. Uh, I am trying again at my sacred sheep hat for my dad. So I have started over. This time I cast on with the waist waste color this is a lot of beauty and ordinary things and then this the brim color which is the color that I want to be visible in the finished hat this is the money beats and both are from the treehouse knits office collection so basically once I knit this long enough to be the brim and be this the length of the brim I want I'm going to fold it and I'm going to knit this this edge which is live because I did the provisional cast on over stretchy cords this edge will be linked to this edge and the black portion will be on the inside so it won't be visible um, when the hat is being worn so that will be for my dad and you want to know something that is just <laughs> so funny i told my dad the other day dad i'm gonna cast on your hat and i'm gonna have it finished before i leave 
Oregon before I'm done staying with you. And uh, he said, oh, you're making me a hat? <sighs> so all this time I was thinking like, oh my gosh, he must be thinking I'm not getting this done in time. He must be wondering where this hat I told him is that I was gonna be making him. He didn't even dang all remember that I was making him a hat. So uh, he's still gonna get one. He's still gonna get this hat. And I wanna get that done this week. So the two pressing goals for this week are the baby blanket, my dad's hat, and uh, I think those are all the projects that I have to update you on. I do want to have a special little mention in today's podcast because I know what I'm going to cast on on April 1st, so I just want to briefly tell you about my plans for that. These three skeins right here, this is a bit like Jenga. Okay, so this is Rory. This is the colorway called Rory from Treehouse Knits. She gifted me a sweater, a sweater quantity last summer in July um, to help promote her favorites collection. And I was working on a field day cardigan by Ozetta. I got really far. I finished the back panel, the front panels. I joined them together and I was almost done with the body when I realized that I had been using two different needle sizes, which was really annoying to me. It was not the end of the world. But at the time, it felt insurmountable because the rowing out, whether or not in reality it was really pronounced or just in my mind it was really pronounced, you know, we'll never know. But I frogged it. I frogged the whole thing. <laughs> oh, I frogged the whole thing. But I really want to cast it on again, specifically in this Rory colorway. I know I want two field days, at least, in my life. I'm going to also one day make a field day in my carpet sweater quantity from Cesium Yarn, but it's time that I try again for the Rory field day. I've been wanting to do this for a long time, and it was serendipitous that Treehouse Knits announced that her next collection coming in May is going to be the Stars Hollow slash Gilmore Girls inspired collection. And Rory is a colorway coming back. So it's only right that I get going on this. This is a really, really beautiful skin of yarn, by the way. Let's just appreciate it together. You've got these beautiful purples, these beautiful greens, this blush color, this uh, like creamy creaminess here. It's just gorgeous. I've said this on Instagram. Um, so hopefully I don't sound like a broken record to those of you who follow me there, but I really think this looks like a stars hollow version of camouflage. It's just so pretty. It's like, if you wanted to blend into the town square of stars hollow, this is what you would wear. It, this is just beautiful. Um, so even though that's not a current project, it is a project that I'll be casting on. And actually, I have another project to tell you I'll be casting on. Today, I'm going to cast on my purple Gretier sweater. <laughs> and I'm wearing my, you know, blue Gretier sweater. So I'll be casting this on. I know my gauge now based on this sleeve turned swatch. So, man, I'm just adding projects to the pile here. Uh, but that's okay, because they're all good projects. They, they all need to be done. They, I want them all to be done. I want to work on all of them. So I'm not going to make, uh, I'm not going to make space to feel guilty about the number of projects I have. It's okay to feel overwhelmed, but I don't need to feel guilty. Like we don't need that. Okay. You know, the project list that you have is the project list that you have. It's going to be different than someone else's. It might be different than what you want it to be, but guess what? Earth still, the earth still turns or something. All right. So those two projects are on the horizon. Now that we've gone over projects, let's transition to the acquisition section of the podcast. Okay, so for acquisitions, I have a few different things to show you. And last week, I mentioned that I didn't have any yarn to update you on. That's not the case this week, so get ready. Um, but the first thing I'm going to show you is what I mentioned I had to help my dry hands. Um, this is Soak hand, Handmade Hand Cream handmade hand lotion, luxury hand cream. <laughs> okay, you're like, those are a lot of words, Rachel. What are the words you actually meant to say? What I actually meant to say is this is Soak brand lotion and it's called handmade luxury hand cream. And it says that it's enriched with shea butter, olive oil, and vitamins A and E. Handmade rejuvenates skin and protects, over, protects overworked 
hands. Oh my goodness, I can't talk. So I got the scent Lacey, and I ordered this from Brandy of Long Dog Yarn. Um, I had Brandy describe to me the scents that she has, because if you're not familiar, Soak as a brand names their scents uh, words that don't recall specific scents just by hearing the words. Like, for instance, what does lacy smell like? I don't know. But it smells good. This is like a really light, fresh, clean scent. Um, there's also a fig scent, a celebration scent, a yuzu scent, and I think a scentless. Um, but I really like the formula of this hand cream. It's really helping my dry hands. Um, I showed my mom the hand cream when I got it. And she liked it so much that she purchased, I think, three different scents? I'm not sure. Um, and then she also was able to get some Chiagu cords from Brandy while she was at it. So if you didn't know this, Long Dog Yarn is not only a soak supplier, but also a Chiagu supplier. So if you want to get some Chiagu needle tips or cords, you can check out Long Dog Yarn for those, among other retailers. But I'm really, really happy with this lacy hand lotion. Also in my order with Brandy, I got a crochet hook because I kind of, like on the day that I was ordering this, I got a wild hair that I really wanted to crochet a pillow sham. You know, that fleeting inspiration has, you know, come and gone, but I have a crochet hook, a Chiago brand crochet hook from Brandy that I ordered somewhere around here. Of course, just like last week with the um, embroidery needles, I have no idea where it is. <laughs> It's somewhere in this house and surely I'll find it before I need it for real life. But uh, so those are two acquisitions, hand cream and a crochet hook. And then my next acquisition is uh, not something I purchased, but something that was sent to me for promo. So my college roommate, um, she uh, introduced me to the wonderful people at Salish Yarn Co. So this is a local yarn store on Orcas Island, which is off the coast of Washington State. And they have a collection coming up called the J-Pod Collection, which is inspired by the, the family, the pod of orcas that live and frequent um, Orcas Island. So uh, here are three of the colorways. These are not all of the colorways of the collection, but this co this uh, collection is basically a lot of high contrast colors. There's also, I believe, a yellow and another purple. So this one is like a pinkish purple, like a fuchsia purple, and there's another one that is more of a blue purple, I believe. Um, so they sent me these skeins for promo. I have two of this uh, fuchsia purplish color. This is called Echo, and it's inspired by, again, the J-Pod family of orcas. So Echo is one of the orcas. And these two skeins are going to become a hat. I am not quite sure which hat. Um, I'm kind of going back and forth on what I want to do. But these are DK weight. No, this is, I think this is worsted weight. Yeah, this is worsted weight. Oh, you know what? I know, what I remember what hat I wanted to do. I wanted to do the Sailor Beanie from Sorry Nordland. Um, so here's two skeins of worsted. Um, and then they were also so sweet and sent me a shamrock stitch marker. Uh, they said in their little note to help celebrate the Ireland trip. So that was really sweet. Um, so yeah, Sailor Beanie with Echo from the J-Pod collection. And then I also had them send me uh, two skeins of Eclipse. So I guess Eclipse is the name of another orca. And then one skein of Crescent. So what I'm going to do with Eclipse and Crescent is I'm going to make an orca stuffy. Isn't that such a cute idea? An orca stuffy made with yarn inspired by orcas. So I'm going to get that on the needles this week as well because uh, the people at Salish Yarn Co. want to have an early April launch for the J-Pod collection and I think that having a nice orca stuffy um, for that launch would be great so I'm going to do my best to make that happen. Um, I was looking at patterns on Ravelry and the pattern that I think I'm going to try is the 
Orca Arlock pattern. I looked up how to pronounce that and that's what the little, you know, volume voice told me. Arlock, it's spelled A A R R L U C K. Um, but Google says it's Arlock. If I'm wrong, I'm really sorry. Um, it's defi it's defined. <laughs> it's written, the pattern is written and designed by Steffi Hochfellner. And again, that's what Google told me. Uh, if I'm totally butchering that name, please let me know. I want to, I want to not butcher names. Um, so Orca Arlock by Steffi Hochfellner. Uh, and it's this really cute Orca stuffed animal pattern. It's written for sport weight yarn, but I'll be using DK weight yarn. I think it will be fine. And then also, the good people at Salish Yarn Co. sent me these um, additional stitch markers to show you their offerings. And they're like, they say like knit two together, make one right, things like that. So that's really helpful for when you're knitting and you need to remember what row you're on. Like if you're making a raglan, oh that's cute. Um, if you're making a raglan and you need to remember when your increases are. Oh, how cool. How cute is this? I was trying to combine cu cute and cool and went cool. Okay. Um, so like on the make one left marker, it tells you, I'm sorry, I'm still learning this camera. It tells you what the make one left is. And then it does that too for the make one right. Ooh. What a great idea. That's so awesome. Really happy to have these. So thanks to the people at Salish Yarn Co. I'm really excited to be par partnering with you. Um, also for those of you who are interested in these colorways or any of the other things that are on offer at Salish Yarn Co., I'm gonna be partnering with them to uh, give you a kickback. So not quite sure yet if that will be a discount code to the store uh, for online shopping or free shipping code or what, but I should have something for you that benefits you um, if you choose to shop through uh, my link or using a discount code I have. Um, for you when the time comes. So keep your eyes out for that. I'll probably be announcing that on Instagram. I try to remember to make community posts here on YouTube, but I feel like no one ever sees them. Maybe that's just my insecurity talking. Um, but all that to say, I will do my best to update you and keep you in the loop when all the stuff is happening. Um, they don't just dye their own yarn at Salish Yarn Co. They carry all sorts of other things like Malabrigio, um, I can't quite remember right off the top of my head what else they carry, but they're like a local yarn store. You can buy all sorts of different odds, ends, and treasures on their website as well as in store. So if you're ever on Orcas Island, check them out. And if you're ever on the internet, check them out too. Salish Yarn Co. Salish Sea Yarn Co. Excuse me. Okay, now let's talk about, uh, last but not least, acquisitions. Oh no, there's one more thing that I want to show you in acquisitions before I do the grand finale, and it's um, a pattern. This is a pattern that I bought this week. I probably bought, you know, more than just this pattern, but um, Jaden of the Winter Witch on Instagram DM'd me this fuchsia pattern, this applique crochet fuchsia pattern. It's $3.50 on Ravelry. I've, I've never purchased a pattern so fast. So I'm thinking that this needs to go on maybe my crazy yarn lady tote bag, maybe sewn on to my Kindle cozy. Uh, the options are endless, but I definitely will be making this adorable, beautiful, perfect, wonderful, flawless, timeless fuchsia applique. My phone is just on the ground and it'll just stay there. Okay, it's fine, I don't need it. Um, but there's a few different options that I have to make that fuchsia flower applique. These three skeins, which you can't really see, and of course they're right at the bottom of the stack. Um, the Copper B Goods Company sent me these three colorways long ago, like probably a year ago at this point, um, because they reminded them of my fuchsia flowers. So I might crochet it out of these. 
uh, but I also definitely want to crochet it out of cabin yarn. So I have, let's see, I definitely have some purple underpants left over from my grandma's scarf. But I, and I certainly have carpet to use for the green, but I don't have um, the pink fuchsia flower color from cesium because I cranked all of that up into socks for DJ. So I, I just need to think a little bit more about um, all my options for crocheting that applique, but I definitely will be doing that. Okay, now I'll get to the grand finale of my acquisitions, the last thing on the docket. And it's in this package from uh, Warmth, which is a local yarn store I found online. So let me open this up and I'll cut past the crinkling so you don't have to listen to it. It's packaged quite nicely. Cute. This is a twister. Uh, it's a European company, a European tool. Um, but I bought it because, <sighs> here's a story. Okay, so in December of 2023, when Twice Sheared Sheep was doing its reveals for their advent box, it was revealed that they had this yarn minder that is not only um, like a wristlet to hold your yarn, but it also has this magnetized base that turns it, I can get it on, that turns it into a Lazy Susan. So obviously this is not a good demonstration but you can use it for on the go or tabletop. That brought my attention to the existence of lemon wood. So I ordered a lemon wood because I thought that the designs were so beautiful and I just wanted to compare. I wanted to have one of each and I've since used both of these and I have found which one is my favorite and I'm going to unpack it in a video for you um, shortly. But then I thought, recently, you know what, I really want that video to be comprehensive. I don't just want to compare the twice sheared sheep on the go yarn carousel and the lemon wood yarn minder. I also want to compare it to the twister. Wow, this is really beautifully packaged. It's got a cute little sticker that says, what does it say? With love? Handmade with love. I love that. And then we've got a nice little uh, uh, info guide of how to use it. And then inside, we have the twister uh, beautifully wrapped. So, wow, that's really gorgeous wrapping. I'm dropping things. Okay, so here's the twister. Basically, my understanding is you put it on your wrist, similar to the Lemonwood and uh, twice your cheap. This is uh, instead of wood and leather, this is all metal. Twist around and the apparatus is different. This kind of looks like a tuning fork almost. Uh, but the apparatus is different. I'm going to play around with this today and um, in the coming days so I can, you know, really understand the difference between these three products. And I'm going to include this in my comparison video. Like I said, out of these two products, I already know which one I prefer and it might surprise you. You like you might think you'd have my number and you know which one I like best already. Uh maybe you don't. Okay? So, uh out of these two, I know which one I prefer, but obviously with this one I haven't tried it yet. I have no idea how I'll like it or how it will compare. So I'm excited to try this out and then let you know uh, what I think when I get to that review video, reviewing the three of these products. Yeah, I'm very excited. I think that uh, like already this is really sturdy and I think it will be a great tool because it spins so smoothly, but I'll let you know my thoughts in full when the time comes. So just hold on to your butts and wait with eager anticipation. All right, so that ends the acquisition section of the podcast and thus the podcast as a whole because I don't really have any announcements. Actually, that's a lie. Yes, I do. All right, let's talk about the announcements section of the podcast. We still have one spot for a knitting participant on the Irish Knitting Tour and uh, I'll tell you that I spent a good chunk of today emailing different brands and talking to them about our goodie bags. So it's going to be 
beautiful. We have uh, room for one more person in the knitting category and four more people in the non-knitting category. So if you want to come, don't wait. Once those spots fill up, they are full. End of discussion. Okay, so now for real, that's the end of the podcast. That's everything that I have to tell you and more, certainly more. A lot of extra information you probably didn't want or need, but I still told you. Sorry. Uh, okay, so that's it. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you don't already, and hit that notification bell to be notified of my next upload. Last but not least, head over to Instagram and follow me at Rachel is Knitting if you don't already. And I will see you next week for episode eight of the podcast. Thank you so much for hanging in there while I learn podcasting uh, or whatever you want to call it. Okay. I'll see you next time and